Okay, welcome everyone. It's very interesting that um, it's Daf Memches. This is a has a piece of Gemara that needs brains. It's interesting. I have fond regards for everybody. I saw this morning uh, Mati Eisenberger. So he listens to uh, Kala Lushin, to Ashir. It's, it works better for his schedule to listen in the morning. So he listens to 15 years ago. And he told me that two cycles ago, I said, before this Gemara, fasten your seatbelts. Uh, it, it, it's, it, it's interesting. He also told me the Staten Islanders will, uh, that on the Shear 15 years ago, both Chaim Eiser and Moish Zucker asked the question. Uh, they're, they're, both, they're both enjoying the rewards of their learning in Shemayim now, but he said it was like, you know, really strange to hear Chaim Eiser and Moish Zucker both ask a question on the daf. Uh, the, uh, Ruvain, you didn't ask, and Ruvain, you weren't killed. Uh, <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Ruvain, Ruvain got killed so many times in Yuvamas. Mamish, Tchiyas HaMesim, over and over and over again. Baruch HaTari, Nailahin Melech Elam, Sha'akol Nia B'Dvaro. Okay, Rabbi said we learned with the Tefillah that uh, all children that need to be gotten into Yeshiva should be gotten in easily and pleasantly. Uh, just to show you the kayach of our learning, the uh, one who sponsored the Masechta had a grandchild that was not in yeshiva, and he called me to tell me that my grandchild had been accepted into the yeshiva of the parent's choice. So, uh, so the horsepower that we have at this year is uh, a strong horsepower. Uh, okay, we are holding... Um, the bottom line of Mem Zion and Bebeis, if you remember, as we welcome in Richard Bullock and Richard Rosenzweig, we welcome in Mo Kushner, Baruchian, Irving Fishbaum, uh, Mark Frankel, Dr. Guy Hadi Appetite, Marshall Castle, Saba, Yisrael Fisher, Shimmy Klein, Mel Zachter, Michael, Shalom Fogel, Gedaya Engel, Berish Gessman, Ada Chasana, Dr. Block, Yitzi Muller, Ruvain Pollock, uh, Nachman, Avram Shankman, uh, Moshe Jackman, and Abarbach, Yeshutman, Yeshua Shmuel Eisenberg, um, and David Helfgott on Kalaloshin, just signing in. And uh, Richard, we want you on Zoom. We want Richard on Zoom. Uh, the, uh, we don't want to be Richardless. So, Vazgul the Tamayu, Rabbi Yechner Reish Lakish, that argue whether Kinyan Aperis is Kikinyan Aguf, the right you have to the usufruct is that uh, considered like you own the actual uh, karka, where Rabbi Yechanan says, uh, if you remember uh, the uh, Machloikis, Rabbi Yechanan says, maybe the Kairi, that if you have the rights of the use of the fruit, you could say the formula of Adam Ashen Asatali. That means Rabbi Yechanan holds Kinyan Paris, Kikinyan Aguf Dami, Reish Lakish holds Kinyan Paris, Lab Kinyan Aguf Dami, the Inmar Hamoycher Sodei, if somebody f- sells his field, Bizman Shayoyvil Noyeg, when the Jubilee is being practiced. So obviously, when you sell your field, uh, ancestral fields come back to the owner at Yoival. So therefore, the buyer only has a right of usufruct for the years up till Yoival. Rabbi Yechelen, I'm a maybe the Kairi. Rabbi Yechelen says he still could say the f- formula, because even though he only has the rights till Yoival, he is Kinyan Paris, Kinyan Aguf. Damei Reh Shalakash, I'm a maybe the Eina Kairi. Rabbi Yechelen, I'm a maybe the Kairi, could say the formula, even though he only has the rights until Yoival, because Kinyan Paris, the right to have the fruit is Kinyan Aguf. Damei, it's as if he owns the land. Reh Shalakash, I'm a maybe the Eina Kairi, because Kinyan Paris love Kinyan Aguf. Damei. So now the Gemara says, Vitzricha. They need to argue in both cases. Why? Diyat Mabahi if they argue only in the c- case before where uh, 
And we welcome in Stephen Holtzman, just joining us in progress. Stephen, it's good to see you. We're holding by Vitzricha, five lines from the top of Memches Amad Aleph. Vitzricha, if they argue in the case of where he sold only the rights to the fruit, Bahi Kama Reish Lakish, it's there that Reish Lakish says, Kinyan Paris Lapke, Kinyan Agof, because since he only got the rights of the use of the fruit, the Chi Kanachis, when he went down into the field, Adata the Peri Kanachis, he knew he had nothing to do with the real estate. Avo Bahak, in this case, he buys the field, it just it returns at Yoimel. The Adata the Gufe Kanachis, here, he felt like he was the owner of the field uh, for, for possibly 49 years, a half, almost a half a century. Reish might agree with Rabbi Yechanan that Kenyan Paris ke Kenyan Agof Baha, and if it only says the case of where you buy the field until Yaivo, Baha Kama Rabbi Yechanan, it's there that Rabbi Yechanan says Kenyan Paris ke Kenyan Agof because he has the field for almost a half a century. Ava Baha, where he buys just the rights to the fruit, Ema Maidalei the Reish Lakish, that he can't say, Ho Adam Asher Nasatali, Tzricha, that they argue in both cases. Toshma, so now the Gemara says, Well, what about this case? Hakaina Ilon Vikarkai, if Mark buys a tree with the ground underneath it, maybe Vikaire. He could, uh, he could uh, bring Bikurim and say the formula, even though it returns uh, at Yaival. So isn't that a right? At Kinyan Paris, Kinyan Aguf, Dami, like Rabbi Eichman. So the Gemara says, no. It's talking about when the Yaival is not Nayik, when the base of Mikdish is not around. Tajma. If Mark buys two fields, two trees for my field. Now when he buys two trees, we say that since that's not an orchard, it's only two lone trees, he does not get the karka with it. So there, he, 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 he uh, says, he brings the Bikurim, but he doesn't say the formula. Hush but if he buys three trees, which is an orchard, he gets the karka, maybe the kaira. Even though it returns to the ancestral owner at Yavil, and it's only a Kenyan Paris. Hachanami says, the Gemara Bizman Sheena Yavil Noyak. Now, the Gemara now is going to say there's another possibility over, over here. And that is a difference between the first Yavel and the second Yavel. When Klal Yisrael came uh, to Eretz Yisrael, the first Yavel, they weren't sure that the field will return to the ancestral owners. And therefore, they assumed, they, 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 since they never saw it before, they felt a proprietary feeling. The Machloikis between Rabbi Yechon and Reish Lakish, whether Kenyan Paris or Kenyan Guf Dami, is only by the second Yavel, where they saw already that the field returned by the first Yavel to the ancestral owners. But Avel Yavel Rishon, but the first Yavel, where they didn't see that everybody thought that they have ownership of the field. So Dibra Akal. Everybody agrees, maybe the Kairi, they could say the formula. They didn't rely, the owners didn't rely that they're going to get it back, and therefore it felt like a complete ownership. So there, everybody would agree, even Reish Lakish would agree, maybe the Kairi. So then there's no question. One is talking about the, the first Yavel, and one is talking about the second Yavel. As we welcome in Yehuda from Harnolf, we welcome in Michal Druk from Delaware. People popping in from all over. We even have somebody learning in Tannersville. Could you believe that? And even Gedalia in Lakewood, Ruvain and, and Mel in Staten Island, and Irving, and, 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 and Marshall in, in wherever he is. Where are you now? In Lake Tahoe? Uh, 
in my dining room. Ah, in Chicago. Mark and Bailey Kinwood, if you could pronounce it. And then and, and Hempstead. We got Dr. Block and Wes Hempstead. And we got uh, 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 we, we, we got, is Mo here tonight? Mo isn't here yet. Uh, but, like but we got Yitzi Mo, Muller in P Pomona. Oh, yeah, Mo is here. We got Mo, who's uh, convalescing in Muncie and Rockland County. And uh, would you believe it? Mel is in the country. Uh, we, got, oh, oh, we got Mel and Shalom Fogel. I could tell that Shalom Fogel is in Woodlake. Uh, yeah, and Sh oh, Shimon, oh, Shimon, you're in the country too. Okay, I'm not the only one that's up here in the in the ferocious rain. Uh, Three of us are in the same place. Oh, it's a triple header. That's right. It's a triple header in Woodlake. That's right. We got a we got a Mazuman in Woodlake, and here he is, Menachem. Uh, uh, oh, that's uh, Chaim Kramer, Kramer, joining us from Lakewood. Uh, we we uh, we we uh, Shalom. Are your pickable day? Are your pickable days over? South Fallsburg. Uh, oh oh, you you're in you're in South Fallsburg, so you're very near me. You could come in person. Um, okay. Anyway, I'm, I'm Rabbi. Said I'm really stalling. Because this, this is the hard piece of Gemara. If you, if you uh, need to take a break, now is the time to take it. Uh, <laughs> um, there goes Marshall. Uh, the, uh, it's a good time. Marshall, <laughs> grab a couple of factors. Yeah. Okay, so let me give you a little bit of Akdama over here, Rabbi Say, because my wife is listening intently. She wants to see what I consider hard. Uh, she can hear you picking at me firsthand. Uh, she wants to know why I go so easy on you. Uh, the, uh, that's really not true. That's really not true. Um, she yeah. doesn't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's really not true. My wife doesn't want me picking on anybody. She, she was Barry's biggest advocate. Barry, 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 Barry she wanted to sue me over Barry. Uh, you know, anyway, um, okay, so let me give you a little bit of Akdam over here. We know that normally... The rule is that when the Yavel is Nayig, the field returns to its ancestral owner at Yavel. That means that if let's say, let's say this field has been in my family for centuries, then if I sell the field to Marshall, then he can keep it until Yavel. At Yoivel, it returns to me without any money. It just returns to me. That's, that's the law. Now, the, th the law becomes tricky when there's hectic involved. So let's say Marshall Well, let's take first, I'm the ancestral owner. If I maktish a field to hektish, and then hektish sells the field to Mark, at Yoival, the din is that I have to redeem it from, I, I have to redeem it before, I, I have to redeem it from Hektish before Yoival comes. If Yoival comes and I don't redeem it, then it goes back to the Kohanim at Yoival. I lose my ancestral field forever. On the other hand, if Mark buys it for me, and Mark is Makdashit, 
Then at Yovel it comes back to me. So here we see that there's a difference between a stay mikna and a stay achuza. Again, if I mock this the field and I don't redeem it before Yovel, then I lose it forever. And it goes to the Kahanim at Yovel. However, if Mark buys the field for me, and Mark is Makdashit, then at Yovel it comes back to me. So there's a difference between a stay Mikna and a stay Achuza. Where the plot thickens is where Yaakov has, let's use, let's use a, uh, a name that we don't have here, where Yitzchak has a steach, uh, uh, where Avram has a steach huza, and Yitzchak buys it from his father. Then Yitzchak is maktishit, and his father dies. What happens at Yom? Because remember now, it's Yitzchak stay achuza because his father died. If Yitzchak doesn't redeem it, does it go to the Kahanim or does it come back to him? The Gemara is going to make a d- distinction. We're going to see Reb Shimon, Reb Yehuda, and Reb Meir. The Gemara is going to talk about two variable cases. One where uh, it was Avram's field and Yitzchak was Makdashit before his father died. Yitzchak bought it from his father and was Makdashit and then his father died. That's one case. Uh, what about the case where the father died and then Yitzchak was Makdash. So now let's see it inside. With Oisi Ois Makimai. I just wanted to give you. Shosh, you want to put on some air conditioning? Very hot. I wanted to give you some background before we learn this. This, is, this could get very confusing. The Gemara wants to say that maybe this machloikis between Rabbi Yaich and Reish Lakish, whether Kinyan Paris is Kikinyan or Guf Dami or not, is really a machloikis tanoyim between Reb Shimon, Reb Yehuda, and Reb Meir. Lemek tanoyim. Minayin lulokeach sodome ovid. Yitzchak bought a field from his father Avram. Avram was the ancestral owner. Yitzchak, who's the ear apparent, buys the field from his father Avram, Viktisha, and he's Makdashit. The Achakach Meisavit. And then his father died. So now the question is now what happens when Yovel comes? Do we say that if Yitzchak doesn't redeem it, it goes to the Kahanim like a steachuza? Or do we say that since Yitzchak, when he was Makdashit, it was a stay mikna? Because he had bought it from his father. So maybe at Yahivil it returns to him. So the Gemara says that Reb Shim and Reb Yehuda hold, not, no. Since at the time before Yahivil, now Yitzchak is the ancestral owner of the field. He has to redeem it before Yovel. And if he doesn't redeem it before Yovel, it goes to the Kahanim. Menayin shetei lefon of kisteach, who's a Talmud Leimer, im estei miknosai asheloi misteach uzasai. Where do we say that if the purchaser, like Mark, is Makdashit, it goes back to the ancestral owner. That's a stay Miknasa, a field of purchase, which is never a stay Achuza. Sada She'ena Ru'uya Liya Stay Achuza. 
That's only a field that when you buy it, it's not fit to become your inheritance. Yotzah Sezu, when Yitzhak bought it from his father, Sheru Yolio Isteachuza, at Yoival it doesn't come back to him, but rather it goes to the Kahana. Dibre Rabbi Yehuda Reb Shimon. That's the position of Rabbi Yehuda and Reb Shimon. Rameir says, Minayin Lulakech, Rameir changes the case. Very interesting. Rameir, I mean, Mamayin Lulakech, Sadame Aviv. Yitzhak bought the field from his father, but before he was Makdishit, his father died. Minayin Lulakech, Sadame Aviv, Umeis Aviv. And his father died. And then he was Makdashit. Now this case is less of a Kiddush. Because in this case, um, it, in this case, when he was Makdashit, it was already a Steyachuzabaya. So Mamayin like Kach Sadamav. He bought the field from his father, Umeis Aviv, so now he inherited it also. And then he was Makdashit. Minayin shetei lefun of kisteachuza that if he doesn't redeem it, it goes to the kahanim. Tam loy mi mest estei miknasa asher loy mistei achuzasa. If it's a stei mikna, which is not a stei achuza, sada she ain't a stei achuza. Yotzes azu that before he was makdish, he also inherited it from his father. Yotzes azu she he stei achuza. The Ilul Reb Yehuda Reb Shimon, according to Reb Yehuda Reb Shimon, this case where the father died and then he was Makdishit, that's Poshit. The Ilul Reb Yehuda Reb Shimon, Meis Aviv Achach Achikdish, Eloi Tzricha Kara. That you don't need a Poshit, because obviously if he bought it from his father, then his father died. Now it's clear, a clear Steachuza. Then if he's Makdishit, of course it goes to the Kahan. That doesn't need. That doesn't need a pasuk. So the Gemara says, "My love, b'hakemifligi." It must be that they're arguing as follows. Rameir holds that there really is no difference in the cases. Why? Because even in the case where the son bought it. And then the father died. Since Rameir holds Kenyan Paris to Kenyan Guftami, there's nothing extra that happens when the father dies. Because already when he owned the Paris, it was as if he as as, as if he owned the Guf anyway. So there, there, there is no difference. Uh, the Rameir saw Kenyan Paris to Kenyan Guftami. And therefore, Ubaha, when the son buys it and then the father dies, Bemisas Aviv who the Loyaris Vlay He doesn't he doesn't inherit anything. Hilkach and therefore Mais Aviv Acha Kachiktisha Tsarakra. The Pasik basically needs to tell us one Kiddish. And that is if the father dies and then he's Makdish, what's the din? Because it may, really makes no difference whether he buys it before the father dies, or if the father dies and then he buys. Uh, 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 it, it makes no difference whether he buys it and then he's makdish it and the father dies, or he buys it and the father dies and then he's makdish it. Because once he uh, he he buys it, there's no difference when he inherits it because. Kenyan Paris, Kenyan Guftami. And therefore, the Pasuk tells us just, the, the, the Pasuk could tell us both cases. Uh, Reb Yudh, Reb Shimon Sub, right? No. Kenyan Paris loved to Kenyan Guftami. That when, 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 when he buys it from his father, it's not a full ownership. And therefore, when he buys it from his father, it's not a full ownership. Therefore, Obaha, uh, and therefore, when the father dies afterwards, so then, Hashtahu de Koyaris. 
And therefore, Hilkach, therefore, Meis Aviv, if the father dies, Vachakachiktisha, if the father dies, and, and after the father dies, he's Makdishit, so then that's clearly a stay achuza. That, that you don't need a Pusik for, because if the father died, and then afterwards he's Makdishit, it's, it's surely a uh, stay achuza. For that, like Tzricha Kra. Ki Kra Lakdisha, where he's Makdishit after he buys it before the father dies. So I might think that since he's Makdishit after he buy, just after he buys it, I might think that that's uh, considered just a stay mikna, and therefore, even though the father dies afterwards, I would say that the um, uh, it, it 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 comes back to him at at Yoivel, because when he sold it, it was a stay mikna. Then he inherited it, so it has the regular rule of a buyer being makdishit where it goes back to the ancestral owner and not going back to the Kahan. Amr Avnachba Yitzhak, no. La'ilam e'ma loch ba'alma kesavre Reb Yudu Reb Shimon Kinyan Peris kikinyan guf dami. Reb Yudu Reb Shimon could hold that Kinyan Peris is kikinyan aguf. And therefore, once he buys it, it should be like he owns it fully, because Kinyan Peris kikinyan guf, and the Yerusha doesn't add anything. But hacha Reb Yehuda Reb Shimon kra ash kechuvadarish. They found something extra in the pasuk. Because lift of Rachman im este miknasai asher loy akuzasai, a ste mikna, a field that's bought, which is not a, a sort of inheritance. My miste akuzasai, from a field of inheritance, soda she'ena ru'uya liyo ste akuzasai, it could never be inherited. Yatsa Sazu, since he bought it from his father, she ru'uya liyo ste akuzasai, then it means that even if he bought it and he was makdish it before he inherited it, it still doesn't come back to him at Yoivel, but rather goes to the Kahanim, because it's a field that was fit for him to inherit. Now we're going to review this again. Anybody have any questions on this before I review it? Yeah, I, I, as, I, as I told you, this is a very, very difficult piece of Gemara. Uh, I want to review this. Everybody agrees, there's no question, that if Yitzchak inherits, excuse me, if Yitzchak buys the field from Avram, and then Avram dies, And then he's Makdishit. Everybody agrees that since at the time that he was Makdishit, it already became his stay achuza. If he doesn't redeem it, it goes to the Kahan. That Rameir, Reb Yehuda, and Reb Shimon are in agreement about. The case that Reb Yehuda and Reb Shimon adds, that Rameir disagrees with, is where Yitzhak bought the field from Avram, then dedicated it, and then Avram died. Rameir holds that since when Yitzhak dedicated it, he was a purchaser, and then subsequently he became the ancestral owner, it has a din of a stay mikna that if it's not redeemed, it goes back to him at Yoiv. Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shimon say no. Even in the event that Yitzchak bought it from his father, dedicated it, and then his father died, still, if Yitzchak doesn't redeem it, it goes to the Kahana. And the reason is, it's, it says, Mistei Achuzah, if he sells something that at the time that he dedicated was right to become his ancestral field, even though he didn't inherit it yet, 
it has a din of a stay achuza that if he doesn't redeem it, it goes to the Kohanim at Yovel and not back to him. Look at look at look at Gedali as a headache. Uh, Gedalia, are you with me? I don't hear him. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm following. Yeah, uh, I just want to know if I explained it good enough. Very well, you explained it very well. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, the rest of the Gemara is, is not hard, Rabbi Isaac. I mean, okay, I mean, I don't know. maybe that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but. Amar of Yosef. So Rabbi Yosef now says a very cute thing. If you remember, we learned many times that if you don't hold the Brera, retroactive clarification, then when Reuven and Shimon divide their Yerusha, they're not dividing the actual Yerusha because they're really supposed to get half of every piece of land and half of every tree, and half of every uh, vineyard. That's the way Yerusha is. Now, if one takes a vineyard, and one takes a land, and one takes the house, instead of splitting everything, then if, if you hold Brera, retroactive clarification, so then we'll say, that they got their actual Yerusha. But Rabbi Eichelin doesn't hold the Brera. So then what is it? Reuven and Shimon, they barter. Instead of me taking the vineyard, you taking the ha uh, half the vineyard and half the house, I'll take the house and you'll take the vineyard. So it's a barter. So then they're like buyers. So then it has to go back at Yavim. So the Gemara asks, if you hold Kenyan Paris, Lav ke Kenyan Aguf dummy, then you'd never be able to, to say the formula Bikurim. Because all Yerushas go back at Yavim. So nobody owns it. So nobody would ever say the formula unless going back to Yeshua, it's on, an only child, the son of an only child, the son of an only child, the son of an only child. And that's what the Gemara says. Really a very interesting Gemara. Amr of Yosef, he loved Amr of Yosef, and Kenyan Paris, Kenyan Aguf Dami. If not, that Rabbi Yosef holds Kenyan Paris, Kenyan Aguf Dami, so that even though the it has to, the state has to return at Yovel and to be redivided again, lo matzi yada veragla vebeisamendish. We wouldn't have hands or feet in in the beisamendish. Amr of Asi, Amr of Yosef, and no achin shecholku. Brothers that divided, lekuchasheng. They're buyers, because they, they barter. Instead of each one taking half a vineyard, each one taking half the house, they barter. And since they barter, it's returned to the ancestral ownership to be redivided again. And therefore, they only have a Kenyan Paris. So then, that that's not considered as if you own it. You'll never be able to bring Bikurim with the formula until it's an only son, the son of an only son, until Yeshua Benun. Now the Gemara says, although this was a nice little nifty proof to Rabbi Yechidin, but that's only if you hold Ein Breira, I'm a rabbi, kro umas nisa messiah leireish lakish. A posik and a brisa a Mishnah is a proof to Reish Lakish who holds Kenyan Paris Lavke Kenyan Agov Dami. Kra, a Beferish Apostolic, it says, Bemisper Shnei Tfuas Yemacherlach, that when I sell Marshall, my ancestral field, I'm only selling him the years of crap. So if he buys it 13 years from Yavil, he gets 13 years of crap. So we see that Kenyan Paris lav ke Kenyan Aguftami is not considered the owner of the land. Mas Nisa. Now here again we need a, a minute of Ahakdama. We know that Bukhar takes a double portion. That, by the way, is the reason why throughout the Torah, Bukhar is spelled Beis Chav Vav Reish. 
except in the parsha of uh, the firstborn takes a double portion. There it's spelled defective base chafresh. And the Vilna Gain, says, because Bez is double the letter before it, Aleph, Chaf is double the letter before it, Yud, and Resh is double the letter before it, Kuf. If it would have a Vav, it would ruin that idea. So that's why Bechor is written without a Vav in that Pasha. Now, a Bechor takes a double portion only B'murzik, not B'roi. The din is that if uh, if a person owed the father money at the time of his death, Le'elainu, the firstborn doesn't take a bu- double portion. He only takes what's mulzik in the estate. Now, having that in mind, Masnisa de Tanya Bechor Noitel Pishnayim Besada Achizeres L'Oviv B'Yoivu uh, Bechor takes a double portion in an ancestral field that will return to his father at Yavon. Now here the father died in the 35th year. And yet we say 15 years later when the field returns, the Bechar takes a double portion. But why? Oh, it must be because, like Reish Lakish, that Kinyan Peris Lafka Kinyan Aguftami. So the person that had it those 15 years only had it for the usufruct. But the ownership of the land still belonged to the father. So it was considered mozik. It wasn't considered roi. Amrabaya, Nakatinon, we have a tradition. Baal benichte ishtoi tzorech If let's say there's litigation on his wife's field. And he wants to go represent her in court. He needs to have a letter of authorization, power of attorney to do so. Now why? He has the right of Yusuf. So that's a right that Kenyan Paris love to Kenyan Agoftami. He's not considered the owner. And therefore to litigate on the field itself he would have to get power of attorney from the wife. But that's only if the litigation was not about the fruit. But if the litigation was about the fruit, which he owns, because he has the right of use of fruit, then he could litigate even about the field itself. Because once he could litigate about the fruit, we say, they can't tell him la bal devarim didiat, and he could litigate about the actual field as well. Hanru lachashaleach, hanru lachashaleach, hanru lachashaleach. Now, for those that have been learning chok with us, very recently we learned this mishnah in the chok. Hanizokim shaman lamidius by damages. If uh, Marshall does damage, he has to pay from his Park Avenue property. When he prays his creditors, he has to pay from his mediocre property. And when someone pays the ksuva of his wife, busy burius, he pays from the weakest property. Of course, it has to be value. But instead of giving the property in Borough Park, you could give the property in Kensington. Rameir Aimer af ksuvas isha bebeinus. The ksuva of a wife also is from the mediocre property. Ain from in the chasam shabbatim. And when a, a collection is made from orphans, it's always uh, for, no. First, ain from in the chasam shabbatim. We don't collect from mortgage properties. B'mok mishiyesh in the chasam dechayim. When there's free properties, v'afilu ain ziburius. Even if it's the weakest level. Now this means that if Marshall owes. Mel money. If Mel doesn't have, and if Marshall doesn't have any property by him, then Mel could take from property that Marshall sold to Mark. That's called mortgage property because Mel has an earlier lien. But let's say Marshall sold property. Mel is Balchayv, so he he should get Bainanis. Let's say Marshall sold Mark Bainanis. 
and Marshall only has by him Ziburius. Mel can't say, I want Mark Spanus. As long as there's Bnei Chayrin free property by Marshall, he has to take the free property and not bother the buyers. So therefore the Mishnah says, Ain't the from in the Chasim Mishabadim. You can't collect the mortgage property when there's available free property by the debtor himself. Even if it's the weakest uh, level of property. Also, Ain't the from in the you cannot collect from the property of orphans, Elamanazi Burris. In other words, the orphans are given that protection that when people come to protect for the debts of their father, you could only take from the worst level of the property from orphans. Now this is an interesting case. Again, this is something that you could expect knowing Marshall as long as we do. Um, Marshall sells to uh, Stephen. Marshall sells to Stephen. He's the unlucky man now. Marshall s- s- sells to Stephen property with security. And then, of course, Stephen finds out that Marshall sold him stolen property. It was, it was stolen from Dr. Block. So, so it was stolen from Dr. Block. So, no, this is, a, this is a done deal. It was stolen from Dr. Black. Now, Stephen planted and made improvements. The, Dr. Black takes the field with the crops and with the improvements. He does pay Stephen for Stephen's expenses. That's all Dr. Black has to do. He has to pay Stephen for the expenses that he put in into the improvement and for the, the seeds for the crop. But Stephen now is out the land and also the fruit, the value of the fruit, the value of his improvements. So he goes to Marshall, who sold him with security. Stephen, thank God, was smart. So Marshall pays him for the field, but he doesn't have money to reimburse him for the fruit or for the improvements. So Stephen goes to Mark, the buyer. The Mishnah tells us there's a tikkun oilam, a protection to purchasers that Stephen can collect from Mark for the fruit and for the improvements. Because there's no way for Mark to pr- protect himself from such a thing. It's endless. Stephen could have pr- planted a million dollars of crops. So Mark, because of the lien that Stephen has, is only on the hook for the value of the field. But he's not on the hook for the fruit or for the improvements. So now let's see that inside. We will not take away from the mortgage property that's Mark for the, the fruit that Stephen planted, not knowing that the field was stolen merchandise. should know better, Stephen. Or for the improvement that he put into the field. Remember, Dr. Black, when he takes back the field, it's, it's, it's Dr. Black that Marshall stole from, he does reimburse Stephen for his expenses. Because anyway, Dr. Black is getting the benefit. So he has to pay for the expenses. But he doesn't have to pay for the fruit. He doesn't have to pay for the, for the, for the because he didn't ask for it. So he doesn't have to pay for the fruit. He doesn't have to pay for the value of the improvements. That Stephen could go back to Marshall for, but if Marshall doesn't have the money, we protect Mark that he can't go back to Mark for that. Another case, if let's say uh, Chatzkel was, uh, let's say Chatzkel sold property to Mark, and then uh, Chatzkel died. So there's the ksuva for his wife. 
and there's the support of the daughters until they get married. So here too we protect Mark for the, not the ksuva, that's a fixed amount, but Chatzka's wife now needs support and the daughters until they get married. We don't take that for Mark because again there's no way for Mark to know how much that's going to accrue when he makes a title search that he should protect himself. Remember Mark, before he buys the marshal, he knows that there are liens. So he does a title search to assess the rich, the risk. There's no way he could assess the risk of maybe having to support the daughters for 25 years. So therefore we don't make Mark liable for that. Mibnei Tikkun And then the final case of Tikkun this is an interesting case. Uh, let's say Marshall finds a wallet. It says Rabbi Moshe Meir Weiss in the license. So he returns it to me like a good guy. And in it is $500. So he returns it to me. Maybe if it would have been $10,000 it would be different. But it was $500. So he returns it to me. And I say there was 1000 in the wallet. So Me'ikar Adin, Marshall would have to swear. Because he's made a mix us. He admits to 500. Might have mixed his Yeshava. But then you know what Marshall would do? He won't pick up the wallet. He doesn't want to get into Shavuos. Shavuos is a serious business. So the Gemara says, because of that, we don't want people to be over the lab of Lysuchel Lysali. So if I somebody finds a lost article, Le Yeshava, we don't make him swear, Now, Remember we said in the Mishnah that the din is that Nizokin pay with idios. Right? If, if, if Marshall damaged Chatzkel, so he pays from idios. And we said that's Tikkun Oilam. What do you mean Tikkun Oilam? That's a Beferish Apostle. Mibnei Tikkun Oilam? That's biblical. Dechsev metav sadeu metav karma yashalim. From the best of the field and from the best of the vineyard, you pay. Ah, best of whose field? If Marshall did the damage to Chatzkel, does he pay from the best of his field, Marshall's fields, or the best of the field that the victim has? So says the Gemara, Amar Abay Litzrichel Reb Yishmol, Amar Midaraisa, biblically speaking, Bidinizik Shaimina. We evaluate by the best field of the victim. We calculate the best field of Marshall, of the Mazik, not the Nizik. My Rabbi Yishmael, what's this din of Rabbi Yishmael? The Tanya, mate of Sadeo, mate of Kami, Yishalem. The best of the field, the best of the vineyard you pay. Mate of Sadeo, Shal Nizik, the best of the level of the victim. O mate of Kamish, al Nizik Diver Rabbi Shmuel. Rabbi Kiva, I mean, Rabbi Kiva says, Loi ba kosov el ligvois nizakim mina idios, which sounds like he holds that we do it from the best of the mazik. Vikal v'chaim al hegdish, and surely by hegdish. The Gemara is going to explain later what does this mean, vikal v'chaim al hegdish. So the Gemara says, I don't understand. What does Rabbi Shmuel hold? Ul Rabbi Shmuel. If, if Marshall consumed a fat furrow, Mishalem Shmeina, and Ochel Kuchusha, if he consumed a emaciated furrow, he's also Mishalem Shmeina? That doesn't make sense. What do you mean, mate of Sadeo? You always pay the best, so if you, if you consume a stacked furrow, you pay a stacked furrow, and if you food assumed, it, it, it consumed a emaciated furrow, you pay also a stacked furrow? That doesn't make sense. I'm Rav Edi, but I haven't know it's talking about when we're not sure. He consumed one of, one of Chatzko's furrows. 
ולא ידינן יקחוש האכל ישמן האכל. We don't know, nobody knows, Chatzkel had both qualities, we don't know which one he consumed, so we say he, cons- he pays a stacked one. ולא ידינן יקחוש האכל ישמן האכל, ומשל לא ממת. So Rabbi says that makes no sense. Remember, Chatzkel is a mighty. He wants to collect from Marshall. I might smech a bell of a riot. I'm a rabbi, ilu yadina de kuchusha achel. Mishal kuchusha. If we knew he ate an emaciated one, he would pay for an emaciated one. Now that we don't know, hashtilul yadina mishal and shmeina, why? I might smech a bell of a riot. So I, I, hate, I, I hate to do this to you. I hate to, to hold you on a cliffhanger. Marshall says, how is he going to be able to sleep? But uh, we're, we're, we're going to stop over here, Rabbi Sai, to be continued tomorrow. I'm going to do a rear reversal. Uh, I had announced and sent out an email that I was uh, doing a chok tonight, but I'm a little winded, and I'm going to uh, push it off for another night. So you'll forgive me for that. Um, uh, and the Mishnah Yaimis I already did because of the because of the, I thought I was doing a chak, so it's online and on Facebook and on YouTube and on anytime.com.